Hi, I'm Stephen Power. I'm a photographer and teacher based on Valencia in County Kerry, Ireland. Welcome to my series of teaching videos. This one is about how to use the new Tone Curve tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic 2020. Hi, in this video I want to talk about the revised uh, Tone Curve that you'll find in Adobe Lightroom Classic version 9.3 uh, that was launched in June 2020. You'll find the Tone Curve in the right hand column of the develop module. First thing you'll see is this uh, graph, if you like, and on the X axis running across the bottom, you've got from right to left um, four regions of tone, if you like. <clears throat> you've got the highlights in the first 25%. Um, um, then you've got the lights, and then you've got the darks, and then the shadows. On the y-axis, you've got an indication of how much of each tone is in each region. Looking at this graph, for example, we can see that the shadows and the darks are quite well represented. But if we come right over to the highlights, there's almost a flat line where most of the highlights should be, which might indicate that they're certainly lacking and possibly that the image is slightly underexposed. So let's have a look at the buttons at the top of the uh, tone curve panel. On the right hand side we've got one for the parametric curve. This used to be called the regions curve. Then we have a button to select the point curve and then three uh, colours, red, green and blue. Um, we can choose each of those to adjust the tones in those three basic colours. Okay, so let's start by having a look at the parametric curve. You can see at the moment we've got a straight line running from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner. If we move down the line, um, we've now got a grey area extending above and below it. And this will change as we move from the highlights area through the lights and the darks to the shadows. This is basically showing us which regions of the image are being affected and by how much, and by how much actually we can adjust them. So at the moment we can see that the shadows and the dark areas would be affected if we moved the curve now. So if we, we can go up as far as that grey area extends and we can come down as far as it extends below the line at that point and that and then we can see roughly what um, changes we're making to the image. I'll just zero that out and then if we went somewhere in the middle um, you can see a lot of the um, tones are being affected now so we're, we're actually affecting um, the shadows, the darks, the lights, or the greys if you like in the middle, the mid-tones um, and almost the highlights, we're just reaching into the highlights a little bit there. And, you know, that can be a, a fairly simple but maybe quite general way of adjusting the tone curves. I'll zero those out and you can see that we've got all of those areas on sliders at the bottom. So, you don't have to move the, um, the line itself. You can just move the area that you feel might need to change and it will show you what's changing and by how much you can change it and how much you have changed the 
moving the line itself as you adjust the slider and that that's quite a, a good way to start just by moving along each of the the four uh, sliders for each tone region of the image okay so now let's get to the point curve see what I did there so the point curve is um, found by clicking this gray circle um, just to the right of the uh, parametric curve now some people think that the point curve um, in the tone curve panel is the most accurate way of adjusting the the tone curve um, but it can also be rather complicated as well and uh, I often find myself getting in a bit of a mess with it um, so what you do basically you click on the line so we've got a linear line here everything's basically zeroed out no changes from the original image and if we click down here in the um, shadow area we'll get a point and then if we move the line from that point we can adjust the whole image um, to clear the point we right click um, and click delete control point so for example if we wanted to adjust up in the um, highlight area up here click on it and it makes this sort of parabolic shape if you like but it's adjusting all the other areas as well the way to control that is to put another point let's so if we put one here in the mid uh, tones area and then move this point it'll only move as far as the second point in the midtones so we'll we can affect the highlights and the midtone areas we can get even more precise put another point here for example and that one will only move as far as the the point below it so there we're only adjusting the highlights so you can be very selective about how you um, control that uh, um, uh, when you get used to it at first it can be a bit fiddly but when you get used to it it's very precise so down here for example we're only adjusting that shadow area <clears throat> now I'll reset that and show you something um, a little less complex so we're, we've got point curve here we've got a drop down box linear medium contrast and strong contrast if we click linear then we just get the straight line no changes to the tones in the original image if we click medium contrast we get this gentle s curve so starting at the highlights and then bending around very gently down in the shadow area um, and that gives us a, a medium contrast in the image if we click strong uh, contrast in the drop down then we get a more um, exaggerated slightly more exaggerated anyway um, tone curve and we get more contrast in the original original image um, you can of course start adding your own curves or points to that um, and adjusting it if you want to so I'll reset that. Um, this is really the way I use um, the point curve. Um, I often go to medium contrast and add some uh, shadows, just, just to lift the dark shadows. Now this image is slightly underexposed, so I might just lift that slightly as well. And often I find that's enough is to just um, 
set medium contrast in the point curve and then make sure that the, the image is correctly exposed to start with and then lift the shadows a little bit um, maybe, maybe sometimes you'll find with different images you'll have to do more or less of that um, but I find it can be a, a useful way of doing it I'll, let's try another one so an image that's quite flat to start with so we'll go into point curve, medium contrast, and immediately we've got some tones that I'm just adjusting the exposure to make sure on the um, histogram there, just to make sure it's correctly exposed anyway. And it just gives us a nice boost of tone. Um, strong contrast just might be a little bit too much. So, you know, that's a good starting point for the point curve, if you pardon the pun. And then the three other um, controls here are the RGB um, tone curve adjustments. These used to be down here. They used to say RGB and you could select red, green or blue. And these will basically adjust the tones of the particular primary colour, so though adding more reds in the shadows um, and then we're adding more green by moving away um, from the linear curve. So that's it really, that's a quick overview of the tone curve in Adobe Lightroom Classic 2020. Um, this version was launched um, in June 2020, it's version 9.3, and I imagine it will be quite similar in uh, other later versions if you're using one of those. And I hope you found it helpful. If so, please click the subscribe button and feel free to share the channel. Mm -hmm.